and now to one of Germany's most striking new museums. Not in the heart of the city, but on the Baltic coast. Aurens Hope's new art museum has already become a landmark. It's located on the edge of town. Aurens Hope is tiny. Just 700 people live here. But for over a century, artists have been drawn here by the Nordic light and the landscape. The village is flanked by a lagoon on one side and the Baltic Sea on the other. Ahrens Hope is one of the most important artistic colonies on the Baltic coast, and it's perhaps the most important, because there's been artistic production here for over 120 years, and it's been of a consistently high standard. Ahrens Hope stands out because this artistic tradition has continued. These are paintings from the late 19th century, just after Aaron's Hope's art colony was set up. Like other European art colonies, painters were enchanted by the unspoiled natural surroundings and the simplicity of rural life. Painter Paul Müller-Kempf was a pioneer in Aaron's Hope. His tiny studio in a cottage dates back to 1909. And it still hosts exhibitions today but space is clearly limited. Another small local gallery is the Bunte Stube. As well as seeing exhibitions, you can also buy books and crafts from the region in this colorful building. The Bunte Stube is an architectural icon from the Bauhaus era. And now Arons Hope has a new gallery, the Art Museum. The museum boasts more gallery space than its rivals, and it looks pretty futuristic too. But it fits into its rural surrounds nevertheless. This nearby farm inspired the museum's architects. It's on the hill opposite the Art Museum. Berlin architects Stab based their blueprint for the museum on the farm. Their design won an international competition. We said, we need to come up with something relating to the village. The thatched cottage provided us with our motif. Because the museum was also meant to be spacious, we decided to divide up the gallery into individual buildings and lay them out like the farm. This is the result, an art farm for the 21st century. It features five buildings interlinked by a central foyer. It costs 7.7 .7 million euros. The facade is made from a special type of brass, one that's designed to age gracefully. Today, you see a huge, golden, shiny facade. And in a year from now, it'll have changed color, like a thatched roof does. It'll be brown and gray, like a thatched roof. Inside, there's over 700 square meters of gallery space. That's big enough to house a third of a collection donated by the museum's patron, a private foundation. All of the collection will go on show step by step. It's great. We really feel at home here. It's the right frame for the art we have on show here. The debut exhibition includes 170 works, with paintings from the early days of the art colony, the modernist era, right through to the present day. Many prominent artists are on show at the museum. The exhibition includes this piece by Lionel Fanninger. And this one by Ernst Wilhelm Ney. The museum will also feature works that date from the Nazi era. Rather than collaborate with the regime, some German artists went into internal exile here. Museum historians are currently preparing an exhibition on the subject. Another show will focus on art made in Ahrens Hope under communism. While featuring the art colony, the museum has its gaze trained on the bigger picture. We're not trying to foster some kind of local patriotism in the cultural realm. In fact, we want to extend our appeal beyond Aaron's Hope, because the artistic colony was part of a European movement, and we want to recreate that with the museum. And already the gallery has been inspiring visitors with its artworks and architecture. 
Arendt's Hope's Art Museum has brought a new kind of charm to the picturesque village and its surroundings.